I talk about odd time signatures all the time on this channel. It's obviously an important part of a lot of prog, and I get a ton of questions about them. And usually I try to offer some simple ways to understand odd meters. In this lesson, I wanna talk about a super common approach to creating more complex odd time signatures. I call this the even plus odd method. Before I get into this, please subscribe and hit the bell notification. It really does help me out. And if you wanna dive a little bit deeper into some of these topics, consider hitting me up for a private lesson. I do have some openings at the moment. All of my contact info is in this video's description. This is a pretty simple idea that can be expanded upon in a lot of cool ways. In this idea, there are two measures, one with an even time signature and one with an odd time signature. If you remember from elementary math, an even number plus an odd number equals an odd number. For example, 4, 4 plus 5, 4 equals 9, 4. Now, obviously you can write music in 9, 4, but combining smaller time signatures together to get a larger odd time signature is a great way to get some more complex meters in a simpler fashion. Let's do something a little more complex. I'm gonna combine 4-4 four, four and 9-16, a basic 4-4 four, four bar and a second measure with two beats and an extra 16th note on the end. Four four has 16 16th notes. Add nine to that and you get 25. So four four plus nine 16 is the same as 25 16. But I've created this in a way that makes a really crazy time signature like 25 16 a little easier to grasp. These even odd pairs of measures are super common in Prague. It's a great way to get some more involved rhythms and I use these all the time. So to demonstrate the power of this technique, here are some examples from my own music. The simplest way to start using this is to combine a common time signature with an odd time signature. The chorus of my song, The Great Stereopticon, alternates between a 6-4 bar and a 5-4 bar. The 6-4 is a simple common time signature, and the 5-4 cuts off one beat from the 6-4, and this makes for a total of 11 quarter notes, or 11-4. Now this brings up the subject of how you might write these ideas out. Often odd time signatures can have multiple interpretations. In this case, I could write it as one bar of 11-4 or alternating bars of 6-4 and 5-4. For me, I usually lean towards using the smaller time signatures as it's easier to read from a notation standpoint. But the truth is that most of you doing this kind of music won't be using standard music notation. So honestly, either approach is fine here. But from a construction standpoint, I am thinking of this as that even odd pair of six and five. The vast majority of the song Shadowed Lines by my band A Sense of Gravity alternates between 5-4 and 6-4, the reverse of the great Stereopticon chorus. In this case, it's two bars of 5-4 with an added beat in the second bar. I'll play just a few seconds of this. Apparently my own band's music that I wrote gives me copyright strikes. So thanks, YouTube. <laughs> Here are some more complex uses of this idea. The intro of my tune, The Fourth Wall, combines a measure of 7-4 and 6-4 to get a total of 13 quarter notes. The pre-chorus of this same song uses the 5-4 and 6-4 combination. This is the same idea as Shadowed Lines. The 6-4 tacks on an extra beat to the 5-4. I actually did a whole masterclass lesson on addition and subtraction within time signatures. If you want a more detailed look at how I use that, I'll link that video below. Back to the Great Stereopticon, this weird acapella bridge section combines 3-4 and 7-8. Truth 
like a flame burning a light truth like a flame burning a light truth like a flame burning you don't watch, watch the news the news watch the news you don't watch the news like a flame burning you don't watch the news watch this totals 13 eighth notes or a bar of 13 eight. The seven eight here is grouped as two, two, three as eighth notes. So it's two, two, two for the three, four and two, two, three for the seven, eight. And this happens when the full band plays this part as well. The main theme from the title track of my debut album, The Ascent, uses the reverse of the previous rhythm. So it goes 7 8 and then 3 4, once again totaling 13 eighth notes. This happens multiple times throughout this 15 minute song in various different tempos and different musical contexts, and I use it as a very important rhythmic motif for the song. In this song, I also use a pairing of 7-4 and 6-4 a number of times, which is 7-8 and 3-4 doubled up. 7-4 is two bars of 7-8, and 6-4 is two bars of 3-4. It's an example of what is called rhythmic augmentation. I'm taking this rhythmic motif and augmenting it, making it larger. One last example of these even odd pairs. This is the long middle section of my tune, Escape Velocity, which is also off the ascent. This alternates between 6-4 and 13-8. The 13-8 here is a 6-4 bar with an added eighth note on the end, and this totals 25 eighth notes. Now there are some even more complex things happening inside of this one. There's a four against three feel inside the six four, and the cymbals are often playing straight quarter notes here, meaning they're gonna play on the off beats during the second repeat of the six four and 13 eight. But this whole section was born from that idea of pairing an even and odd meter, and I think it would have been far less interesting and far less groovy to just repeat that six four over and over. So that's even and odd time signature pairs. This is something I hear all the time in Prague, and it's a really great way to start creating some more complex rhythms. Time signatures like 17-8 or 27-16 are super intimidating for a lot of people, but often these can be broken down into something smaller and simpler, and these even odd pairings are a common way to do that. 
What are some examples of this that you've heard before? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this lesson, subscribe, hit the bell notification, like, comment, share. Till next time, stay proggy.